Hi, everyone. I'm Bruce Bannard. I'm the principal investigator of the InSight mission. I'm speaking to you here today from uh, Lockheed Martin Space, where the uh, Spacecraft Operations Center is, is located. InSight has been on the surface of Mars since uh, November of 2018, uh, listening with its seismometer uh, and various other instruments, uh, weather instruments and so forth, to what the goings on on Mars. Um, and we're here today to talk about some a new discovery that we're really excited about uh, in terms of the, uh, the first time that uh, uh, impact's actually been uh, observed as it happened by a seismometer and then observed also from, from uh, space by uh, the orbital cameras. Uh, before we get into that, though, I'd like to uh, tell you a little bit about the uh, uh, spacecraft status on Mars. Uh, can we have the first image, please? Um, as you probably know, as InSight's been sitting on the surface of Mars for the last four years, it's been uh, collecting a lot of dust on, on, on its solar panels. Uh, this is a picture of the solar panels uh, a, a couple of months ago, and you can see that it's really, really dusty, and that's cut down our solar power, and we've been uh, sort of cutting back on the operations of the, the spacecraft as, as that's happened in order to, to uh, squeeze out as much uh, science data as we can. About a month ago, we got a, an additional challenge to the spacecraft. If I could have the next image. Uh, this is a, a global mosaic of Mars. It was taken over the course of a day, and it shows a large dust storm in the southern hemisphere that started kicking up about a month ago. Uh, if you go to the next image, we can see the dust storm uh, shown in uh, uh, the orange, so you can see where it is. Fortunately, that dust storm did not move over InSight itself. Um, InSight is uh, over on the right side of this image, one of those, those spots on the right side of the image. And so that was really fortunate because if it had passed over the spacecraft, it would have darkened the solar panels and we probably uh, would have lost the spacecraft. Um, but unfortunately, since this is such a large dust storm, it's actually put a lot of dust up into the atmosphere and it has cut down the amount of sunlight reaching the solar panels by quite a bit. Um, we, went down, we went from about 400 watt hours per sol, which is the, the units that we uh, measure the uh, spacecraft power in, down to less than 300. Um, and we were we had to cut shot off the seismometer for a few weeks. We are now uh, operating the seismometer again, uh, only one day out of uh, four at this point to uh, conserve our power. But even in that at that uh, uh, relatively small amount of, of use, uh, the batteries are still slowly being depleted. And so, what we believe is in the next uh, uh, short amount of time perhaps somewhere between four and eight weeks as best we can, can predict. We expect the uh, lander to uh, not have enough power to operate any longer and we'll lose contact with the spacecraft. So that's uh, a, a sad thing to, to, to contemplate, but InSight has been working marvelously for the last four years. We've gone well beyond uh, the intended lifetime of, this, of the, uh, the mission, which was two years. We've been collecting data and even now, as we're, we're winding down, we're still getting these, uh, these amazing new results. Um, if I can have the, uh, the next animation, this is, uh, oh, this is a, a, an image showing that the, uh, the relative locations of the InSight lander over on the left-hand side of the image and this impact that uh, caused a crater that we were able to pick up with our seismometer and that was later imaged um, with the uh, Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter. Um, we, I can show you uh, the, the, the seismic data, and actually you can hear the seismic data. Uh, what we've done here is we've speeded up the vibrations that we measured with the seismometer up into the, the range that we can actually hear with the human ear. So we've sped it up about 100 times. Um, if you were actually uh, on Mars, you would feel the shaking, but you wouldn't be able to hear it. But this way, we can actually you know, transmit it over the internet and you can, you can experience it. Um, this is about 45 minutes of, of uh, seismic data and you'll be able to hear it in a little less than half a minute. So if we can go ahead and roll that animation now, um, you can listen closely to the sounds of Mars. And what you've experienced there is the, the first bulge and you can see in the image was the P wave coming in, the, the first wave that comes from, the, from uh, any seismic, uh, seismic event. And then the big bulge there is the S wave 
And then buried in that is actually the surface wave, which is uh, one of the, the real interesting findings from this, uh, this, this new event. And we'll be talking about that a little bit more later. Um, so with that, I'd like to hand it over to uh, Lilia Posilova to talk about how this, uh, this really interesting discovery was made. <laughs> 